My name is Hassan. Behind the camera we have Sarah. And today we're going to explain how different balls, or why different balls bounce at different heights, uh, as well as touch upon some of the physics underlying this phenomenon. We're going to drop a basketball from about shoulder height and see what happens. So, when we drop the ball, gravitational potential energy, which is the energy of the basketball due to its position in, in the gravitational field, is being converted into kinetic energy, which is the energy due to movement. But as we know from the first law of thermodynamics, all energy within a system is conserved. So, if we're dropping the ball from this height, why isn't, why isn't it rebounding to the same height? What we're dealing with here is an inelastic collision, where some part of the kinetic energy of the of the ball is being converted into some other form of energy. What other forms of energy are we talking about here? Well, first off, as you can tell from, this, from the audio clip, uh, some is being converted into sound energy, which is the energy of uh, refraction and compression waves. We're also losing energy in the form of heat because the ball is making contact with the floor and there's some friction there that occurs. So for your reference, we've included some equations that help to uh, model what exactly it is we're talking about here. On the way down, the amount of kinetic energy lost by the system, which he refers to the basketball, to the surroundings, which is everything else, is equal to the amount of energy lost to due, due to heat, plus the amount of energy lost to the generation of sound waves, plus the energy lost due to air resistance. When the basketball is on the way up, the amount of kinetic energy lost by the system to the surroundings is equal to the amount of energy lost due to air resistance. So now that we've seen how a basketball reacts when it impacts with the ground, how does this compare with a medicine ball? So why did the medicine ball rebound to such a small height compared to the basketball? So let's revisit this from the beginning. We have the medicine ball with gravitational potential energy being dropped, and this energy is being converted into kinetic energy. Now when it makes contact with the ground, the center of mass of the ball needs to decelerate, and in the process, we're having the ball deform. Now although you can't see this with this camera footage, with a high speed camera, you really get to see the ball surface deforming. And in this process, we are losing elastic energy to the environment. Okay, so, we're going to introduce an idea called the double ball bounce experiment. This is what really inspired our Lab 5 idea. Now although we took a great deal of time to delve into the physics underlying a ball bouncing, just to round off our experiment, we're going to introduce this now. So I'm going to drop the basketball and the tennis ball from my shoulder height and let's see what happens. So why did the tennis ball bounce so high up as compared to the basketball? Well, let's take it from the top. So, our basketball and our tennis ball are being dropped to the ground, and so they begin with a lot of gravitational potential energy, which is again converted to kinetic energy. And when the uh, basketball makes contact with the floor, again we're losing some energy due to some deformation, elastic energy, as well as heat and sound energy. But when the basketball and the tennis ball make contact with one another, a lot of the kinetic energy is being converted from this very large mass to the very small mass of the tennis ball, which is causing it to have a lot more kinetic energy to rebound way high up. Well, thank you so much for joining myself and Sarah today in our presentation. Uh, we hope you learned something new about collisions and the conservation of energy.